everyone. My name is Nancy Nicholas. Um, we are here for the special series, Utah Support Coordinator Strategies for Success. Session one is called Team Brandon, Breaking Through Barriers. And we are very excited to have you with us today. Um, I am with the Institute for Community Inclusion. I also work on the State Employment Leadership Network Project, and I am very happy to be with you all again. My colleagues, uh, John Butterworth and Janine Zalaki facilitated the support coordinator series for Utah a short time ago. And we would like to thank Tricia and Aubrey from Utah State University Center for Persons with Disabilities for hosting this great event and working with us on it. Utah DDSD understands and supports a case manager's role in assuring service quality and outcomes for people with IDD as a critical agent of the state. And we want to acknowledge their investment through the webinar series and uh, Utah Shorts. Uh, with that being said, we will have Director Angela Pina come and speak with us here in a little bit. And so stay tuned for more information about what is happening around the great state of Utah. Okay, I want to introduce you to uh, Corinne Frazier. Um, today and on November 19th, you're going to be hearing short presentations from these support coordinators who will provide and share ideas and strategies for supporting people to reach their employment goals. We hope that the stories that you hear will inspire you and that the strategies that they share will move you forward if, they're, if you're feeling stuck. After I, I, I'm going to give you a very brief um, recap of how things are going to go today. Um, we're going to introduce Corinne uh, in just a little bit, and then there's going to be a brief video of her story about Brandon. Um, there is a chat pod um, and where you can type in any thoughts or questions or observations. And after the video, we're going to have Corinne come on and answer those questions for you. We're going to do a quick wrap up after the question and answer uh, sessions, and then we'll send you on your way. We purposefully keep this short because we know how very busy case managers are. Your speaker, Corinne, is a support coordinator that contracts with the state of Utah for the Division of Services for People with Disabilities, and she is the executive director for Synergy Case Management. She provides support coordination to individuals with disabilities and their families in community and home waiver programs with the goal of supporting them to reach their full potential. This is very dear to Corinne as she does have a child with a disability. Corinne has been in the field of social work for over 19 years. She holds a degree in psychology and a minor in Spanish, and she has acquired her, she has earned her acquired Brain Injury Specialist Support Coordination Certification and is a qualified intellectual disability professional. Corinne and her husband have two, three children, two who are adopted, and they are happy owners of a crazy and active Labradoodle named Rosie Rue Tallulah. So we are going to show a video entitled, entitled Team Brandon Breaking Through Barriers. We'd like you to listen as Corinne describes her philosophy regarding supporting people to work and strategies she and the team have used to help Brandon find his dream job. Hi, my name is Corinne Frazier and I am so excited to be here with you all today. I live in the beautiful state of Utah and I have been a support coordinator case manager for over 19 years. I received my degree in psychology and my minor in Spanish. I love to do light hiking, cooking, and reading. But enough about me. Let's get to an awesome story about Brandon's success with employment. I attended a great conference by Griffin and Hamas that talked about different creative ways that one can explore job opportunities. 
this really made me think outside of the box and helped me look at a different perspective. One of the exercises that they had us complete was to take a look at our lives and to talk about what interests we have and to be able to connect that with employment. I never realized that someone's passion can be easily molded into helping them secure employment in the community. Brennan's file would be deemed from an outside perspective as being someone that might have difficulty with employment. However, Brandon has awesome, awesome strengths and skills that one would see when visiting with Brandon, like his ability to follow routine and schedule, to use a checkoff list, and to be excited when he accomplished something big. And so Brandon's team, which included the following, his speech therapist, his autism therapist, his behavior therapist, most importantly, Brandon and his parents, his supported living team, his supported employment team, and his case manager all got together and we decided that we needed to come up with an awesome name. So we call ourselves Team Brandon. As a support coordinator, I found that as my role in helping Brandon with his employment, that one of the hardships and challenges to that was coordinating everyone's schedule. Brandon had an amazing team that we decided and looked at all of the supports he was receiving and decided that we really needed to come together, all of us at once. So coordinating became kind of crazy, but we were able to use Zoom and electronic formats to really be able to give everyone the opportunity to be there together, to be able to problem solve and to help with Brandon's employment services. Another big challenge was working with vocational rehabilitation. And those services sometimes can be very overwhelming to families, not understanding exactly what role they have to play in with employment services. So I found that a lot of my assistance came with coordinating with his voc rehab specialist when that time came for funding and being able to share with the team how we can work together with voc rehab as well. The team came together and decided that Brandon would really benefit from having chores at home as well. So a task analysis card was created for Brandon to do the following activities. Wiping tables, cleaning windows, taking out the garbage. Brandon would work on each of these skills and he would be able to follow step-by-step -step instructions with crossing off each checklist for all of the activities that he had completed. I saw his self-confidence shine when I went to visit with Brandon at home and he had shown me that he had taken the garbage out all by himself. And I replied to Brandon, you are a rock star. And he said, yes, I am. The team came together to really decide what would be a great employment experience for Brandon. We examined things in his life and it was really obvious that Brandon loved movies and especially new releases. Brennan was able to secure a job interview with Cinemark Movie Theaters. However, lots of preparation and time went into helping Brandon be able to make this successful. 
Brandon practice mock interviews at home. He had cue cards for specific questions that one might ask during the interview. And he was also taught to ask if he needed a break, how to do it politely and to go and get a drink and come back. I am so excited and happy to report that Brandon was able to secure a job as a lobby attendant at the Cinemark Movie Theater. This brought Brandon so much happiness and his self-confidence and his self-esteem skyrocketed. He loved putting on his uniform. He especially loved showing everyone that he had his name tag on. And he loved having the opportunity to use the punch-in time clock. The Brandon's job assignments included cleaning the movie displays, taking out garbage, cleaning the arcade, and cleaning the tables. Brandon carried in his pocket on a little keychain step-by-step instructions for how to complete each work assignment. Because of this, Brandon was able to have independence and he was able to have a great positive structure for his work day. He was allowed simple choices within his work assignments to make his own routine. And this allowed Brandon to have self-confidence. His job coach was great at keeping Brandon calm and collected. And when he was frustrated with a work assignment, which I can say and I can self-disclose that at times I too get frustrated with work assignments, that Brandon was able to be able to choose between two simple tasks. And she would say, Brandon, do you want to clean the arcade or the movie displays? This allowed Brandon to stay calm and allowed him to make choices and allowed him to feel validated and that someone was listening to him. Barriers to Brandon's employment included his behaviors, but I am happy to report that Brandon did not have any behaviors while at work. And some may question, why? Why is that? What's the magic key to Brandon not exhibiting any behaviors? And I can simply say, because Brandon loved working. His Brandon really showed us that barriers are to be broken. He showed us that given the right skills and tasks, that anyone can be successful in employment. I believe that the keys that helped Brandon to be so successful was his positive team supporting Brandon and giving him great encouragement and great structure and allowing Brandon to use his task analysis cards to make sure that he was successful with every job assignment. I believe that having a job coach that stayed calm and collected and allowed Brandon to have choices really set Brandon up to have a great employment experience each and every day. My advice is simple. Let's think outside of the box. Let's stay positive and let's work together to break those barriers. So much, um, everyone. And uh, Corinne, we have some really wonderful um, comments in the chat box. Um, I, first, I'd like to say that I hope everyone enjoyed Brandon's story as much as we did. Um, later, I'm gonna share a few lessons that, that I learned um, from Corinne and from Brandon and, and his team. Um, again, if you have questions or comments, please add it to the chat box. Uh, Janine is and John will help me uh, keep an eye on them. Um, Corinne, I want to give you the opportunity to say hello right now. When I'm really excited to be here with you guys today. 
and to just share Brandon's story. And I hope that you are all able to learn something from me sharing his experience. Thank you, Corinne. Um, I, I want to read to you a couple of things uh, from the chat pod because I think that they're just wonderful and, and true. Um, so one of the things that someone said is I love the emphasis on coordination and communication so far. There are a lot of different services to utilize with employment and communication um, among the key partners. And uh, we had a comment that said, um, checklists really work well. And um, we had another individual say, the person-centered approach that you use to connect Brandon's interest with your approach to securing the interview is amazing. Go, Brandon. So those were a few of the comments. We'll get back to other ones first. Um, I, I would like to, to ask a question that I've been really curious about, Corinne. One of the things that we talked about in our very first meeting was the challenges behaviorally that Brandon had. And, and one of the comments that you made was if you see, you know, that if you just saw his file, um, that you may not try to support him in getting work. So my question is, why did you take that leap of faith? And what made you believe that what you saw on paper wasn't all there was? I think just knowing Brandon and his ability to really reach out and show us that he was improving in his behavior and improving with all of his goals, that we felt like it was best to give him a try and let him succeed before coming to the conclusion that he just possibly couldn't do it. And do you think that the training that you attended influenced that at all? Yes, I think it had a big influence on me, realizing that employment can be customized and specific for everyone's individual needs, especially with the special needs population that we serve. I just never really realized that we can all come together and help them with their employment goals. Thank you. And, and I think that's very true. Uh, boy, you, you really built a great team. Um, so Gordon wants to know, how do you handle it on those days when Brandon doesn't feel like going to work? Or are those days? Does yeah. he have those days? So what was neat is that Brandon was really motivated to work. And part of that was just seeing the new movie displays. And so we never really had any issues or concerns with him not wanting to go to work. He was just ready to go. But I would say if that was an issue that you are trying to help someone on your caseload with, definitely get with the team members and talk about it. And maybe there might be a specific reason that that person might not want to be going to work. And I would say Brandon really did well with rewards and setting up a system for that. So that's what I would try and do and recommend. Great. Now, um, someone also asked, how did you break down barriers? Like if you, it, you if the team had um, some team members had some disagreements about something that the way you should pursue something. Yeah, so I think it's very important as a support coordinator case management to look at everyone's perspective and kind of really dive into what the best interest is for the client and see how we can align everyone's individual thoughts with being person-centered and recognizing that the client is the most important and really making sure that we all are there to support the client and their goals. And it, we had a, another series that was a short series and, and uh, that was a common theme around between all of the support coordinators is keeping the individual at the focus. 
Exactly. And as long as you kept the individual as the focus, you could really overcome any kind of barrier. Would yeah. you find that to be true? Yes, very much so. Mm -hmm. So um, having such a large team uh, in the planning process and in developing the actual plan, um, how specific did you get on who was going to do what and uh, made sure that everybody kind of kept up with, with what they agreed to do? Yeah, so with a big team like that, everyone kind of received homework assignments. And then it was kind of part of my job to send out emails and just reminders for the next meeting and kind of coordinate what everyone's assignment was to come back to the next meeting to be able to share that and to kind of move forward. So there was a lot, a lot of coordination and follow-up, I would say, definitely a lot of follow-up. And, and as the case manager, that was kind of your role, wasn't it? To make yes. sure that that all stayed together. So it's a big, big part, but I think it's definitely needed for sure. So Trisha just said, my chat is moving quickly. In my experience, support coordinators don't always see themselves as a person that can really bring a collaborative team together around employment. Yet you have really done that. What is your advice to others to gain the confidence and the steps to take to do this? I think with the confidence, just reminding ourselves that we are there definitely for the consumer and that the consumer is the main person that we're really trying to set up these supports with. And then I think allowing everyone on the team to have that vision of what it's going to look like. And I think, especially in Brandon's case, just knowing that this was going to make him so happy and he was so excited to go to work, it really motivated me to be a big cheerleader for him. And I think the steps that support coordinators need to take is just to remind ourselves that this can be an opportunity for everyone and to just really think outside of that box and know that we have a huge role to play and that working together as a team, we can get there for our consumers. That, that is really great advice. And um, I, I see that well uh, displayed in the story that you tell. Um, another thing from, the, from all of the videotaping we did, and, and just to let our audience know, we had about 40 minutes of tape and condensed it down to 10 minutes. So there's a lot of jewels in there um, that, that were really wonderful. But um, one of the things you talked about is not only how um, he became more empathetic and communicative to people at work, but some of the changes they saw with Brandon at home. Can you talk a little bit about that? Yeah, it was. Um, so Brandon had a goal of working on empathy and perspective taking, just understanding other people's perspective. And he had a neat experience where one of the coworkers wasn't there one day and Brandon actually asked about this coworker and was showing emotions that he was concerned and wanted to know what happened to her. And this actually gave him kind of a platform and a practice to be able to come home after that work day and share that experience with his mom and dad and be able to realize that he was learning about empathy, which was so huge for him. And so they were able to see little ways that he was showing empathy at home and asking about different family members and what was going on with them and showing concern for them. And I really believe it was through his workplace that he was able to gain that skill and then come home and practice it and refine it and learn how to relate in different environments. And that was huge for him, huge. It's, it really is a uh, indication of how employment is important to so many different aspects of our lives, I think. Yes. 
Um, I we have about probably another thirty seconds. Is is there uh, Janine or John? Is there any uh, question that I missed in the chat pod, or any questions or comments that you would like to share? Hi, Nancy. It's Janine. I um I don't. You didn't miss anything, but I I think we have Director Pina on the line, and I I just wanted to say a few words. Um, we're delighted to be with you again. Uh, John and I have have facilitated a series of webinars and enjoyed that very much. And I also wanted to say a few words about Utah DDSD, understanding and really supporting support coordinators, um, case managers, your role um, in assuring service quality and outcomes for the people uh, you support. And I really know that um, Director, P Director Pina sees you all as a critical agent of the state and I just felt that I wanted to acknowledge their investment through the webinar series and not in, and the Utah Shorts. And also, also thank Tricia and Aubrey from the Utah State University Center for Persons with Disabilities for hosting this great event and working with this. With that being said, I would really like to introduce Director Angela Pina to speak a, a minute or two on, on the points that I have made. Uh, Director Pina, if you're, you're able to uh, unmute. Thanks, Janine. Um, Corinne, thank you so much for sharing that story today. Um, it's, I think it's good for everyone to kind of see what's possible and, and for us to learn from one another. One of the, as, as Janine mentioned, we really see how valuable and important the role of support coordinators are in our system. But we also know that you need to have like the tools and the supports and the resources you need to be the most effective. So one of the reasons we've worked with USU to get the webinar and the four webinars that have been out and the shorts are, are for that, to help get those tools to you, to help you um, kind of start to have a vision of, of your role and how you can support someone through employment, how you can better know where they're at, what they're interested in, and how to approach them. Um, we've been working on the Pathway to Employment tool, and some of you have piloted that. We really appreciate that and the feedback that we're getting, um, because the intent is, uh, I think we all have the common goal that we want people to be engaged, have lives that are full and meaningful to them. And we know that a big part of that for people in general is employment. Um, we know that when people are working, their health outcomes are better. There's plenty of studies to support that, um, that they gain self-esteem. And I think Corinne spoke to that too, right? She, she saw self-esteem improve and it helps them have those natural connections in their communities. Um, I know that it's like with the public health emergency, it can be a little bit different in how we're looking at approaching employment whether it's maintaining it or exploring or learning. Um, so I just also wanted to remind you that we have some of that guidance and on ideas um, available on our website as well. And always you can reach out to Bryn or Amy. Um, I'm really excited that Corinne shared this, that we'll have another one. Um, and I think it's, it makes it really apparent how critical the role of support coordinators are in someone's success and having a successful life. Um, so thank you for your time, Corinne. Thank you so much for your for sharing your story and Brandon's story. And thanks to Brandon for, for being open to having everyone learn about him. Um, and I hope you guys all have a great day. Thank you so much, Angela. Um, we really appreciate the sentiments and, and the work that Utah is doing um, to support our, our support coordinators who work directly with people and making a change in their lives. Um, there, there are a few things that I also heard uh, that I'd like to share right now um, and, and from Corinne. And, and the first thing I think that really struck me is that she really took the training uh, that was provided uh, to heart and it, she implemented what she learned. I think that, you know, case managers are sent to a lot of trainings and Sometimes it's kind of hard to find the time to really think it through and do something with it. But that's one of the things that Corinne did that I think was vital. 
Um, she also built a diverse team of people to help plan, strategize, and implement ideas. Her communication with them was absolutely key in, in holding people's feet to the fire, so to speak, and making sure that everybody did the things that they needed to do to, to, to make this successful. Uh, she didn't let what she read in his file uh, determine whether or not she was going to help him seek employment. She really focused on his skills and not his deficit. Um, she made a connection between his interests and passions about movies to the job search. And we're all better at work when we're passionate about what we do. And that's no different for the people that we support. Um, she talked a lot about flexibility and choice and how having choices and being flexible in the way that supports were provided empowered him to succeed. And she identified or helped identify tools and implement tools like checklists to help him build success. And, you know, as, a, as an ex support coordinator, I will say that I know it's not always your job to create a job coaching tool. Absolutely not. But you can be aware of what they are. You can suggest their use. You can monitor how well that it's going. And you can, as Corinne did, bring the team back together to problem solve and to talk about um, different things that can be in place to support that the success of people. So I encourage you to do that. Um, that's what I heard. I, I read a lot in the chats about what you heard. Thank you so much for sharing your thoughts with us and with Corinne. We really appreciate it. Um, and so uh, as, as we talked about, there are some additional resources for you. I know Angela mentioned a few others. Um, here's a few on our screen. If, if you are interested in hearing some more short stories, uh, we have six of them that are listed at the link uh, selnhub.org slash shorts, which, which are a joy to listen to. And we have uh, created a guidance document as well that's available. Glad to hear Utah is heading in that direction and I can't wait to see what, what you all come up with. 